everyone and welcome back to the Brush and Bubbles channel. I hope that you're all excited to do some painting with me today because I'm really excited about the painting we're going to be doing because we're going to go more abstract today and I feel like going a bit more abstract with your painting can actually be a really good de-stressor. I personally find painting really therapeutic and if I ever just need to unwind a little bit I always pop on a candle as you can see and some music and I just sort of get lost in the painting and it can completely unwind me so I feel like a painting like this is a really good one if you just want a little bit of relaxation. And the reason why I love doing abstracts is you don't have to overthink what you're doing. You can go wild with your brush strokes, you don't have to be neat, we're not painting anything too detailed. If you go wrong, it's okay. Sometimes when you make mistakes, when you're going abstract, it's actually what makes it better. So I feel like this is a really lovely one for us all to do together because everyone's is gonna look completely different. So we're gonna start by doing the background, adding in a few shapes, and then we're gonna go in and add a face on top of that as well. You can go rogue and wild with your own paintings. You don't have to follow along with me, but I will be showing you the colors I'm making just in case you like them as well and you want them for your own paintings. And I will be showing you how we can break down the face. So before we jump into our painting, I'm just gonna talk you all through what you'll need to create it at home. I started just by covering up my table with an old dust sheet, but you can use some old newspaper or an old tablecloth. You'll need a canvas, a couple of different size brushes. I have a medium square shaped one and a smaller pointy one. You'll then need some kitchen towel to dab your brushes on, a glass of water, a palette to pop all of your paints in, and then your acrylic paints. So once we get started, I'll be showing you which paint colours I'm using, and you can simply apply the same to your palette. But like I mentioned, please feel free to use any shades and colours that you wish. I'm going to be going for more of a muted, earthy-like tone with my whole painting. So I'm going to be showing you how I'm creating those colours, just because I find the more muted down colours quite calming. And I actually really like them for the sort of style of painting we're going to be doing. However, I have done this before with bright multicolours and it works really well. So it's completely up to you, whatever mood you're in, go for whatever colours that you want to go for. I've also got here a thick black pen. You don't need this, but it's quite nice to have it as an option for drawing in your face, just in case you don't want to go in with the paint to do your face. So I would just have a pen handy. Um, it's also a good idea to have a little bit of spare scrap pieces of paper, just so you can practice your face or a couple of different options and shapes for your face before you go into your canvas. So just set yourselves up, make sure you're nice and comfortable, you're relaxed, you can light a candle, pop some music on, go grab yourself a drink, and then we'll get started with our abstract painting. In my paint palette, I have white, black, pink, yellow, a dark shade of green, and some blue paint. We just want to start this painting by covering up the background of our canvas. So for mine, I'm just gonna go with white paint because I want to add the shapes on top. You can do any shade or colour that you want. I would just pick your colour of choice. Grab your medium brush. I've just dipped it in the water to loosen the bristles. I'm just gonna pick up some white paint. I'm just gonna cover the whole canvas with this white, and then I'm either gonna let it dry or you can also give it a dry with the hairdryer, just if you want to speed things up a bit. So just spend a moment covering up the whole of the background of your canvas. We can now move on to mixing up the colour for our first shape. So like I said, I'm going to go for more of a neutral kind of tone as the base for all of my colours. So what I like to do is just mix up a light grey shade. So taking my medium brush, I'm just going to pick up some white paint and move it over to a different dish. And then I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of black to this and give it a good mix. So for my first shade, I'm just going to pick up some of this grey that I've just made and move it over to a different dish. And then to this, I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of pink. And I'm going to give that a good mix. So this should give you quite a nice neutral, almost like a dusty rose coloured pink, which I just love this colour. So I'm going to use this for my first shape. Now this is the fun bit, because we're going quite abstract with this, you can really do whatever you want. You can do different kinds of shapes, you can do loads, you might wanna be quite minimal. Just have a little think what you wanna do with your own painting. I'm just gonna start quite simply and I'm just gonna do a rectangle shape, I think, just coming off the edge of the canvas. So I'm just gonna draw that in now, just using my medium brush. 
and I'm going to have it coming off the side and I might actually just wrap the paint around the sides of the canvas as well. And I'm just going to simply fill it all in with this same colour. Now it's really up to you what kind of style you want to go for with your own painting. As you can see here, it's a little bit messy at the bottom, but I actually do quite like sometimes when naturally it's a bit wobbly and messy, especially with this kind of style of painting. If you do want to, you can just sort of neaten it up if you want to be a little bit more neat with your style that you're going for. But if you've got a few wobbles and strokes and a bit of messiness in there and you like it, then definitely just go with that and keep it there. So I'm happy with that, so I'm going to move over to my next colour. And since I've already got this shade on my brush, all I'm going to do is just add to the shade that I've got here. So I'm just going to add a little bit more pink to it. And I'm also going to introduce a little bit of yellow and give it a good mix and see what I come out with. So this is giving me a slightly more orange shade, but I want to go a step further. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of the yellow, a tiny bit more pink, and I'm also going to introduce a little bit more of the grey paint back into it as well and give it a good mix. So I'm happy with that shade and I'm just going to use this for my next shape. So again, this is really your time just to do whatever you want. If you want to, you can just mute me and go off into your own world of painting. It's actually just so, so relaxing. So just go for whatever you want to do. Uh, I think I'm going to do a sort of swoop and the top right hand side. I'm going to have that coming off the edges as well and I'll paint the side and I might just leave a little gap with the white in the corner. I'm now going to move over to my next shade and I think I want to go for more of a blue tone so I'm just going to wash off this paint from my brush. So again just starting with some of this grey that I already made, I'm just moving over to a different dish in my palette. If you've run out of grey, you can just make up a little bit more. I'm just going to add a small amount of blue to this. So I think with this shade, I'm just going to do a triangle or a diamond-like shape, maybe just coming out from the side of the bottom right-hand side of the canvas. As soon as you're happy with that, you can just give your brush another wash. I'm now going to mix up more of a green tone, but because I want to stick with that earthy undertone, I'm just going to add some more white and black to the base just because I've run out of my grey. I'm just going to mix that up and then to this grey tone, I'm just going to add a little bit of green. So with this green, I think I'm just going to add a sort of oval shape over this side of the canvas. You can even change the shape slightly and just make it whatever you want. I might just square off some of the edge and maybe wobble, make a little bit of a wobble or a bump on another side. So really just do whatever you want, whatever you're feeling. Now I'm going to give my brush another wash. Moving back over to my palette, I'm just going to mix up some more grey as my base. So just white, a little bit of black, and I'm going to add some yellow to this. So with this more yellow tone, I'm going to create a sort of shape in the middle. This is where roughly my nose of my face is going to go. So I quite like that I've got a rough shape of a very abstract, almost Picasso-like nose going on behind where the nose might be within my face. So I'm just doing like a rectangle almost coming down, but then I might add a little swoop off the side. A bit like that kind of shape, but I think I'm going to fill it all in. So 
my next shade I'm just going to add some more white to this colour that I've just used and I'm going to add even more yellow to it. And then what I might do is just pick up my smaller brush, some of this paint, and then maybe in the top left hand corner, I might just do a couple of stripes sort of coming off the side of the canvas. So I'll just do them now. So whenever you're happy with the background of your canvas, we're just going to leave it to dry. So I'm just going to move it out the way for a moment so we can focus on a couple of options for our face. So I'm just going to show you this on a piece of card using a pen. So you can, like I mentioned, use a pen to draw your face onto your canvas. You don't have to use paint if you don't want to. And the fun thing about this is we can really go wild. You don't have to make it look like a real face. That's the whole point with painting abstract. You can really just do whatever you want. So for example, if you wanted to, you could just do a couple of shapes. So that could be the eye. You could then just do a shape for the nose. You might even just want to do one line for the mouth and leave it at that. You might want to go a little bit more detailed maybe with that kind of shape for the eye. You might even want to bring the eyebrow down and that can be part of the nose. And you could have a tiny little dot for the mouth. You could, if you want to go even more elaborate and have more of like a, a proper arched eyebrow, bringing it down to nose shape and then have an eye in here. some eyelashes and then more of a pouted lip if you want. It's completely up to you. You could even add ears in if you want. <laughs> they look like quite elf ears, but you can add ears in. You could add zigzags for cheeks. You can just do one side, both sides. It's completely up to you what you do with your own painting. As you can see, I've really only quickly drawn little sketches out there. Um, and you might just want to give this a practice, but anything you, you do on this works, which is the best thing about painting something like this, because I always find that they're quite effective. I do would say is if you overly practice it, it might lose a little bit of the sort of uniqueness, but I do think it's nice to sort of like have a go at a few different eye shapes, have a go at a few different lip shapes, a few different noses. You might want to be more profile with your face something like that, <laughs> again zigzags for the cheek, it's completely, completely up to you what you do with your own painting. As soon as the background of your canvas is nice and dry and you've practiced some of your faces, this is the moment we're going to go in and add to our painting. So decide your medium of choice, you might want the pen, you might want to use um, the paint and paintbrush. If you are going in with paint, whichever colour that you want, just make sure you're adding some water to it. So I'm going to be using black paint for mine, but I want to make it more of an inky consistency just to thin it out. So I'm adding quite a few drops of water into that black paint and really, really mixing it in. We just want a nice sort of fluid consistency with our paint. If the paint is too dry, it makes it really hard to paint nice, crisp lines with. So just add, I would say, about four or five drops of water but just make sure you're really really mixing it in we don't want it dripping we just want to be able to draw nice lines like this with it so i've prepped my black paint with water and i'm just dashing off any excess on the side of my palette and i'm now going to move over to my painting so i know that this seems like the scary bit but please don't worry because like i said you can really do anything with this painting and it will work so i'm just going to start with an eyebrow so I'm just going to do an arched sort of eyebrow shape, ignoring the shapes that I've already created underneath. And the reason why this is going on so nicely is because I've added that water into the black paint. And because we're using acrylic paint, it tends to dry quite quickly, which can be really great. But when you want it to be more fluid, you can just add the water and it helps you out. So it's a lovely versatile paint to use. It just means that you have to add the water as you go, whenever you feel like you need to. So I've sort of done that eyebrow and then I'm gonna maybe sweep it around 
into the bridge of the nose and then down into a sort of nose-like shape. I'm going to focus on the eye, which is here. So I'm going to do a leaf-like shape for my eye to start with. Like a leaf or a lemon. And then I'm going to do another line just sort of underneath that top one. I think the good thing about this is just not overthinking it. Maybe not working too slowly either. Sometimes the quicker you do the lines, the better it is. And then I might just do a circle in here for the actual eye. And then I might even add some eyelashes. So starting from this second line that we did, I'm going to just do some quick curves going up. Might move back down to this part of the nose and I might even do another line of the nose starting from here. Sweeping that round, maybe even going underneath it. Might then just draw a line here, which will bring us down to the lips. And then for the lips, I'm going to go for those sort of pouty-like lips. So it's almost like drawing little triangle mountains. So sweep it up into a point, another point, and down. And then you can do an elongated M shape in this middle part. Elongated M, and then just a little sort of elongated U shape, just curving up like that kind of thing for the mouth. I think I like just having half a face on my painting, but I might just do another eyebrow on the other side. Might even add some eyelashes underneath, might be a bit smaller. And just to sort of finish it off, I might just do a zigzag here for sort of cheek. Quite like doing sort of lines and zigzags within the painting. So I might even just do like a swoop here, bringing it off the side of the canvas. Maybe even like a dot. We're almost like doodling now on our painting. Might even do like a a swirly line sort of going along over here. This is really just your opportunity to go a little bit wild. <laughs> I might just do a couple of sort of stripes here. Maybe even another dot just up here. So I personally like the minimalist look for these kinds of paintings, but it is so fun to just doodle away on them. So I would just say, if you're having a good time, carry on. You don't have to just use black paint. You could maybe mix up a gray again and go in with some gray shapes. You might even want to do another face on top of the face that you've already done in a different shade or a different color. So it's completely up to you what you do with your own painting. You might want a whole series of them. You can do a couple more different ones, maybe using different tones, different faces, different shapes. So I just say, carry on until you're happy, but just take a step back every now and again. And if you're loving what you've created, then amazing, stick with it, step away from the canvas, put down the paintbrush. But if you're not liking what you've created, you could always mix some of your colors back up, wait for it to dry, go back over with some more shapes and start again. I feel like there's something very freeing about doing a painting like this. And once you get into it, it is so mindful and therapeutic. You can really just get lost into what you're doing. And I think it's nice for us all to do that sometimes. So if you're enjoying what you're doing, just carry on, do one on another canvas. But if you're happy with what you've created, pop the paintbrush down and step away from your canvas. So as soon as you've finished adding in all of the details and the shapes that you want to your painting, you have then completed your abstract masterpiece. I hope that you all enjoyed that. I hope you feel nice and relaxed and de-stressed like I do. 
If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to give us a little thumbs up. And if you haven't already, don't forget to check out all of our other videos because we have a whole array of different painting tutorials and other craft tutorials that you can follow. You can simply just click the link above. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Bye.